Welcome back to the KDPG Sunday edition. We're talking about a recent emotional return to Vietnam by legendary Steeler running back Rocky Blyer and the release of an updated version of his personal story, Fighting Back. Later this month, along with Art Rooney Jr., Alan Fanica, Buddy Dial, and Bill Nunn Sr., Rocky Blyer will take his place in the Steelers Hall of Honor during a ceremony at Heinz Field. Rocky's back with us now and joined by Ben Stahl, Chief Executive Officer of the Veterans Leadership Program of Western Pennsylvania. That's one of several veterans organizations that will benefit from the sale of Fighting Back. Uh, ben, thank you very much for being here. Oh, thank you. Uh, when you. How did you two get together and how did this book uh, become a project that would benefit veterans charities? Well, okay, so, <laughs> so uh, when we decided to redo the book, and one of the reasons we did, I, I decided uh, that it was maybe time to, uh, to redo the book um, was that I thought it was a story that could be, you know, uh, told and retold again, uh, and, but to bring it up to date. More importantly, throughout the, throughout the years, <laughs> much like I just uh, met your new general manager, Mr. Howell, uh, and he said, you know, the first book I read, the first book I read, I always think it was in the fifth grade, was, was Fighting Back. And so I'd get these, these, these inputs from around the country. And I thought, well, maybe it's time because now all of a sudden it's a book that's available for their kids or their sons or daughters and or their grandkids, you know, that, yeah, this was a book that I read. Uh, when I was your age and so and I thought okay what we do need to do is to bring it up to date uh, and to make it worthwhile you know is that the, we decide okay fine you know the proceeds for this are going to go to, to to veteran organizations um, and uh, and so we made that we made that tie-in um, because it's been a great part of my life obviously and a big part of my story but more importantly it's 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 much needed and focused uh, on what uh, veteran issues are today, more importantly, uh, as we had this whole campaign is uh, fighting back for veterans to give them a voice as they make their transition from the military back into uh, our society. So as we well know, I mean, 1% of our population serves our country. And a lot of times the general population don't understand what that veteran does go through. You know, and they thank them for their service and they thank them for all that they do and the commitments that they made. But when that soldier leaves, you know, they just think, oh, well, the VA will take care of them or the service or the Army will take care of them. And that's not necessarily the case. There's things that are available through the VA, um, but a lot of times when you're making a transition, you're leaving a job to go someplace else, you just want to leave the job, you know, and you want to go on and do whatever you're doing over here. Uh, but unfortunately, you bring a lot of baggage that goes with that job, and, and our veterans carry a lot of that baggage uh, specifically. Well, one of the things I wanted to ask, Ben, is, is, is the Army is different now, or the service is different now in the sense that we're we're fighting wars still, especially in the, middle, in the Middle East and Afghanistan and places like that. And what's different is a lot of times now, and Al Villanueva wrote this, there are two or three or four tours of duty. That's a little bit different. These, these men and women have to make that adjustment many times over. These veteran groups, and, and what can we do and what can, uh, how is that being addressed? Is it being addressed by, by our, our leadership in Washington? or? And how do you feel about that? And how do veterans groups um, help with that? Yeah, um, so I, I, I know I, I see stories of some veterans that have been on, you know, uh, upwards of, of 10 deployments, and that's, that's unheard of. Oh. Um, we've been, you know, at this, at this war throughout my 30s and, you know, since the early 2000s. And um, I could speak for, uh, you know, veteran service organizations, what, what they're doing is preparing uh, to maintain an infrastructure to be able to continue to provide services um, for this generation of veterans and for the next gener generation of veterans um, so that when veterans transition um, back into civilian society from the service, they're not faced with the uh, systemic hardships that Vietnam veterans were faced with. Um, not having resources, not having uh, organizations to turn to. Uh, my organization, for instance, uh, Veterans Leadership Program of Western Pennsylvania, uh, was originally the Vietnam Veterans uh, Leadership Program of Western Pennsylvania. We since uh, removed the Vietnam from the name to be more accessible to all veterans, but it really is uh, the old guard of, of Vietnam veterans that are really you know, spearheading these efforts to uh, make sure that this generation of veterans uh, has the resources and the care that they need. 
when you look at the social service landscape that's available for veterans, what's the biggest unmet need? I think mental health, um, mental health issues, um, as well as uh, veteran underemployment. Um, in Pittsburgh, we're very fortunate to have a great you know, continuum of care um, insofar as veteran uh, homelessness. Um, so we, we've got resources there. Um, it's, it's veteran underemployment. It's not valuing uh, the experience of a veteran in your company, in, in, your, in your firm. Um, it's you know, not taking those tangible skills that veterans learn in service and applying them to your bottom line. Um, getting before you, you know, and as a sailor, before you re report to your first ship, they say um, you, you receive upwards of $100,000 of training from, from the Department of the Navy. And when you transition and, you know, you're not, you're not utilizing yourself to, you know, the full capability um, that, you, that you did in the service, you're, you're really wasting, wasting all of that training and experience. So a lot of big, a lot of the transition, I mean, just part of the transition is the understanding from corporate America uh, of what 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 values a a a, a, a soldier has uh, or a sailor has in what they've been learned to trade so you're looking you're looking at somebody who had may has nothing to do with what your company has but pro provides the leadership characteristics uh, you get a job done knows how to do whatever it is and so how do I make this transition so you have you know HR over here not understanding because you got young people that are running HR and and they don't understand how we can make this transition so that's a big bridge that needs to be crossed and understand on, on, on both sides. Plus the other thing is that a veteran has always worked as a team. We work as a group. We work as a team. And so it's what that team does, not what I do. So when you're looking for a job, you've got to get over the team aspect and start saying, okay, this is what I can provide. Uh, and that's a big judge, a judgment, a, a adjustment uh, to, to individuals when they make that transition. Yeah. I think you look at two different also things. You, you men served two different times in our country's history. Um, Rocky, you served the time, and when you came back to this country, the country looked at a lot of Vietnam soldiers, and you know when they came back, it was like, you know, what are you doing over there and why are you back? Ben, was different. Now, now we, we honor veterans every Sunday at a baseball game. You stand up in the seventh inning, you sing God Bless America. Um, it's a lot of thank you for your service, things like that. Can you men just you know, briefly talk about that and just, uh, Rocky, I know you always say, you know, we don't, I don't do politics and things like that, but it was a very political time in our country and now is a very political time in our country, but it's two very different ways that the public looks at military service. Right, okay, so just from our, so from my point of view, that soldier was identified with the conflict. So you as a soldier, you were a baby killer, uh, you know, you were a bad person because we didn't like what was taking place in the war. And maybe rightly so from that regard. Uh, and, and unfortunately though, that the individual soldier got caught up within that whole thing. A lot of times, a lot of times when you were coming back from uh, Vietnam, uh, on the flight back, they would tell you if you're going to a civilian uh, uh, airport is mm, change into civilian wear and not your uniform uh, just so that you blend in easier and make some adjustment and people aren't going to hassle you coming through. So that's a big, now we get, you know, from the Gulf War on, it's like, whoa, you know. Get up, up with the first class when you ride in your dress <laughs> that's blues. right. And, you know, yeah. it, it, and they, so with pilots, you know, make an announcement that we get uh, military on board and, you know, everybody applauds and so yeah. on. So it, it, you know, so it, it is different. But, and I think, and I'm going to ask Ben to talk about this, is that, after a while, after a while, after a while, after a while, you know, it gets to the point where well, sir, you know, you thank me for my service. Okay, fine, fine, fine. You know, so I, I appreciate that, you know, but, you know, it gets a little tiring. Yeah. <laughs> at, what, at what point is it, you know, is it lip service and, and you feel compelled to say, you know, out of, uh, out of guilt to say, you know, thank you for your service because you didn't serve. And I think a, a, lot, of the, a lot of it has to do with, you know, the, the uh, that Iraq and Afghanistan were started with a, a attack on uh, the American homeland mm -hmm. um, and in contrast to Vietnam being a, a war of foreign policy and it's easier to uh, disagree with foreign policy than it is to you know an attack on your next door neighbors um, so I think one just at a, at, a, at a fundamental level I think that's one of the reasons why uh, veterans from post 9-11 area are so well received but to Rocky's point it's 
you know, hire more veterans, uh, provide more opportunities for veterans. Uh, they'll just thank a veteran. You, yeah. you know, this reminds me of, uh, you know, sometimes political figures after, uh, after a tragedy will offer their thoughts and prayers, and then they're criticized by people saying, well, is that all you have to offer? If you really care about this issue, take some steps. So is that sort of what you're saying? Instead of people... People can say thank you for your service, right. and they mean it from their heart. Right. Right. But I guess the greater the greater good would be take that appreciation and and pressure your elected leader. You know, turn it into something that's going to help a veteran. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Because well, it's very, it, it can very, seem very cheap just to say thank you for your service. You're, you're, you're right. You know, so you know, part of it, part of it is that you know, in general, is it well because is there a guilt factor? You know, as we said, less than one percent of our population so there's 99 percent of the people that you know don't have to serve uh, our country in, in foreign wars or, or so on so you know it, that that becomes part of it a lot of it is, they're very serious you know because they've had somebody that served in the past uh, and they really want to thank or they have an appreciation but really so how do we well, take that appreciation and, 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 and make it better for our veterans to be able to assimilate back into our society that's by uh, understanding what they go through one and secondly uh, uh, is to be able to understand the 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 the, the uh, strengths and the traits that they can bring to a workforce, you know, and also to understand understand the 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 trauma that they go through and how tough transitions are and the problems that can surface later on because of their multiple deployments. Um, well, and, just and, so and, there's, there's that understanding. And talking about it even here today is part of that process. Right, yes. I'm sorry to cut you off, but yes, we got to sell your book, Fighting Back, <laughs> right, uh, this new special edition. <laughs> with a forward by uh, Big Al Villanueva and two new chapters by Gene Collier is available at Fighting Back. Uh, give me the website, Rocky. <laughs> it's at fightingbackforveterans.com. That's the only place you can get this? That's where, yes, right okay. now, the fighting, yeah, at the website. Got it. All right, okay. uh, Ben Rocky, thank you so much. Thank we'll take you. Take a break, a break back Thanks with a program note in just a moment.